Well, happy Monday night, everybody. I'm Aaron here in the Bowtie Treasure Studio. How are you doing tonight? It's a new week, new opportunities, new projects. What are you working on? Why don't you let us know in the comments? We also like to hear where you're from. So why don't you join me on this project as I get the finishing painting touches on it, and then I can finish it up and get it out the door before you know it. We're gonna do something that uh, is quick and easy. It's a nice, fresh, or a quick technique that you can use to add some age to a piece and uh, just get some character. I'm gonna be using hopefully just three colors. We'll see where that goes. Uh, I've already painted this low antique dresser, uh, one coat of, let me get my Savannah Mist. Almost forgot. Savannah Mist, but we're gonna use vintage duck egg as a, a faux distressing color and also add a touch of haint blue, hopefully to lighten it up. On the screen behind me, you, you'll probably see just a little bit of bluish tone. It is a very light, light, soft, um, cloudy, uh, think of some other words that uh, describe uh, this color. I was looking for my color swatches because I was gonna show you, there we go. I like to use, Dixie Bell has color car, uh, decks and I really use it as a great reference to figure out my color groups. And I wanna show you, you'll see here that this is, um, this is gonna be the haint blue. This is right here is Savannah Mist. And then the last one is Vinch Duck Egg. So what I'm looking in these cards, I'm looking for value. Light, medium, and darker. Um, now I can go much darker, but I'm looking for color harmony as far as tone. So these are all colors that have blue tones to them. So uh, I wanna keep them somewhat, what we would call analogous. They all have similar color tones to them. So that's how I pick my colors out tonight. Medium, light, dark. And um, of course there's the biggest contrast is between these two. So we'll use haint blue just as a slight touch to lighten up the color. And we'll use vintage duck egg just to dark. Okay, we're gonna switch to vintage duck egg now. There we go. And again, a reason for this is I didn't want to get super dark with it. I wanted to keep it in the same color family, cool colors. And I think this will be. So this is the part of the project where you just need to have some fun and experiment. If you need to experiment on another piece of pay, uh, cardboard box, or if for some reason that you don't like what you did here, my recommendation would be get a misting bottle, spray it, brush it into what you're doing and recoat it with paint. We're going to go, we're not going to go that direction, okay? We, we really want to just have fun with this and let it go. So just get some paint on your spatula, palette knife. And this is where we're going to use what I'll consider a, a medium to light touch. Now, um, I would normally have tried this out before I got live, but and my concern at this point is that it's going to be hard for you to see... Um, on camera and the reason for that is because the the color is a little close in value let's go to our color card again so this is what we're going this is our contrast you can see here how close they are in value they're not super far apart like a, a fluff would be this would be far apart so with that in mind it's yeah you might i might have to go a little darker but i i'm, I'm going with more of a subtle I don't want this to be super prominent. My concern here is that someone might, um, I'm going with the idea, I'm going a little neutral and I don't want a lot of, I don't want it to be so busy about that. I think that's a good way of describing it. I don't want it to be so busy. Let me pull you in. I think the camera's not quite catching that just because of the distance and the lights. You see how subtle that is? It's gonna dry darker though. I'm banking on it. Now, I do have my heat gun that I can pull out. So here's where I'm just gonna do a little bit of scraping. And I like to sometimes turn it this way and do some, almost like there's boards cracked. And each time I'm just touching the paint container, I like to pull it and hit edges there you can see right there some of it coming through. 
So this is not the this is not a dramatic contrast, but I would rather if you're res if you're reserved, this is a better option of just doing a little bit than to go in there with the color like I mentioned earlier, stormy season. You're like, oh no, it's too dark, and you're stuck and you got to repaint it. You could always add just you could add more than one of these colors. I think that's just great. Not too dark. It's subtle and gives us the look we're going for. So let's keep going down the side of the cabinet. And I'll want this, this technique to, and I like to go this way whenever there's a joint. I can't explain why, other than that it works. Catch edges. I describe this as faux distressing. So you're, you're um, creating a look of, you know, things cracking, scraping, distressing from the feet up. You hear that scraping sound? And then after that, I wouldn't use the heat gun much, just enough to prove your concept and your value. You can scrape and slide as much of this color as you want. And just let it go. Sounds like a song, right? That's, that's, I would stop somewhere in there so that you can just let it dry. And then later on, come back and look and um, just see if it's working for you. So let's do that. As I mentioned before, I don't normally do. I, I personally, I don't like to do the tops of the pieces. But when you're doing faux distressing, it might could use a little bit on the edges. You decide on your piece what works. And um, I did not paint the sides of the drawers because it is there is no wiggle room in this piece at all. Sometimes I can put little tacks or spacers, but this one's going to drag. It's going to it's going to distress itself over time. Everything draw, everything slides smoothly, but this is one reason I'm using this technique is because I'm kind of owning the fact that it's going to scrape and crack and See how I'm going sideways? I'm, the palette is very flat. How that contrast is working out. Let's take you in a little closer. Let my camera grab a hold of that. There we go. So just soft. Not like I could have gone with really dark, but I think that would not be. And let's take another peek at the other side. You can see it's just working out. And it's pretty quick. If I was doing a darker color, I would probably do even less of this. But because this vintage duck egg is a lighter color, you'll find that you can get away with a little bit more. There is some damage on this part right here. I actually had to glue and fix. And this is another example of why faux distressing, it helps kind of embrace the damage of a piece you might have so it helps you just kind of own it and um, what do we call it complements the damage or the age remember this is over a hundred years old so of course it's gonna someone love this piece so I'm just accentuating all the flaws all the love that was put into this piece
Be sure you're following um, Bowtie Treasures on social media so you can see progress pictures and finished pictures. All right, this is feels feels about right. Again, subtle and just gives it a nice casual feel. You just look it over real quick, adjust where you need to. We won't heat gun all of that. You can always go back with um, a sanding um, sandpaper and even sand over it and that gives another dimension of wear because you're trying to uh, show age over time. It does help to go up and down a little bit. Okay, that's looking good. Um, I'm just gonna touch. I, it's so bright. So this is paint blue. I want this just to almost be a, just, just a touch here and there. I don't want this to be a lot. The camera should be picking up. Just literally touched it three times. So. A little touch here, a little bar there. This is just a highlight, an accent. This could be a compliment color. Compliment would be something like a yellow or a light, very light orange, but this is just to catch a little bit of the eye. This should dry a little darker, but not much. Do you see how little I'm touching it? This is like a little, you're just adding little surprises here and there. And this is to taste, so meaning you, you add as much or as little as you want. Okay, so the idea is that maybe over time, you got a little bit of touch of color there too. Very reserved. As I mentioned before, not much compared to the first time I touched it. You can see it there. Just a little touch. If you did a complement color, which would be a warmer color, it would it would also help catch the eye, add a little bit of surprise. Just keep it. Now I could do this surprise with even a darker color. You can go either way. But we're adding depth to the project. That's really the key. Now, the, I'm a fan of, I like the top coat, so I expect that the colors will get a little richer um, as I move ahead. You can do this technique with the new Terra paint. That would work great, same principle. Terra might give you more texture so that when you drag your, your knife, you're gonna hit more edges. So that could be a lot of fun. In fact, if you watched my live, which I now have on my YouTube channel, where I'd use Terra Paint on my personal entertainment center, you'll see that I did some of this on my, uh, on my silk piece. Love for you to check that out on YouTube. I did put a link in the description of this live, so if you need to go check out Dixie Bell's product line or find out where the retailer is in your area, do that. I'd love for you to use my link to do that. So yeah, just look at that, I'm just hitting it. <laughs> All right. So this is a um, unusual for me in that it's subtle Normally when I'm doing this kind of thing, I'm doing more of a bolder contrast. So uh, I, I kind of like that I mix it up a little bit. 
Subtle Faux Distressing. We'll give it that title, how about that? So the three colors were uh, Haint Blue was the lightest, uh, Savannah Mist was the body, and then Pinched Duck Egg. And it's looking pretty good. I still need to do the mirror, um, but I think I'll, I'll uh, do that off camera. Pretty simple, hope that helps you. And I, I'm excited to uh, share these techniques with you here in the Bowtie Treasure Studio. All right, happy Monday night, everybody. Have a great week and do something awesome, be creative. I'm Aaron, thanks for watching tonight. Stay tuned for the finished pictures and we'll see you later. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.